Last week we got started on the new number improvements ES2015 introduces. This week we're going to follow up with the rest. These are special case uses that may not come up incredibly often, but it's good to be aware of them just the same. First, let's talk about floating point math very quickly. Essentially, when dealing with decimal points, computer math in general and JavaScript math in particular can get, well, weird. A super common example on the web is this code. Seems like you should get 0 0.3 and then true, correct? Guess again. So, yeah, that's frustrating. Because of this inherent limitation, there are a lot of workarounds for dealing with impossibly small fractions. ES2015 introduces number.epsilon as one of them. Essentially, number.epsilon produces a ridiculously tiny fraction. 2.2204460492503131 e to the negative 16th, which equals out to 0 0.0000000 a whole bunch of zeros 22204. Rather than trying to remember those values, you just use number.epsilon. And the main purpose is to check and see if a fraction is so small that it's effectively zero. Essentially, it's a margin of error. You could use it like this. That's going to return true because the margin of error is going to be less than number.epsilon. There we go. Floating point math is not going to come up a lot if the data you're working with is mostly things like how many usernames are in this array. But if you're trying to do complex charting or anything relating to graphics, it becomes a much bigger deal. But let's say you're not into floating point math. Let's say you just want to stick to integers, and you've got all these decimals flying around. Well, math.trunk has got your back, my friend. In ES5, we'd have to write our own function, like this. And once again, I've borrowed these functions from es6-features.org. And then you'd use it like this. Save that. And refresh. 4, negative 184, negative 0. Yes, negative 0. But we no longer need that function in ES2015. Observe. And let's put in a quick separator. Save that. And there are values. Note that this does not round the decimal as you can see with 0 0.987 there. It just lops the decimal off and gives you the integer. If you want to round, then good old math.round is still your best bet. The last ES6 number addition is math.sign, which returns the sign of a number, meaning if the number is positive, it'll return 1, if it's negative, it'll return negative 1, and if it's 0, it'll return 0, or negative 0 if you happen to feed it a negative 0. It can also return NAN if fed that value, but as with isNon from the previous tutorial, you can't use this to check if something's a number or not. It only returns NAN if the value is actually NAN. Here's the ES5 function you'd have to write, and a few use cases. Save and refresh. 1, negative 1, 0, NAN, as expected. Now here's the ES2015 way to do it. Note that here we're going to generate NAN by trying to divide two strings, which produces NAN as a value. Let's save that and check it out. 1, negative 1, 0, negative 0, NAN. That's what we've got for numbers in ES2015. Next week, we'll move on to a new topic. I'm recording this tutorial several weeks in advance, so I don't know yet what that topic will be. But we'll find out soon. Until then.